Welcome back everyone, my name is Creepynuts, I am playing Kona. Let's uh, let's try this way. Let's see where this leads me. Let's, uh, let's see what's up these stairs. Maybe, uh, find something cool or interesting. Okay, um... I guess let's, uh, let's... What's this, uh... There should be a law forbidding doctors from falling sick. In spite of Dr. Beaupre's goodwill, the place didn't look much like a physician's office. It could easily be mistaken for a sewing shop. Only a great misfortune could have pushed a man like Dr. Beaupre to isolate himself from the world, far up north and buried in snow. So uh, detailed looking. Um, maybe uh, teeth, false teeth. I'm not really sure what that's uh, supposed to be. Cat litter? Okay. Carl got the trembles as he imagined the excruciating pain that kind of scalpel could no doubt inflict. I'm not really sure what... Within these miserable walls, patients probably felt more like in a slaughterhouse than in a doctor's office. I'm not really sure For the one-eyed, or for other vision problems, the eye patch was the way to go. The doctor's spouse was equally pretty and faithful. A deep kindness radiated from her eyes. Doctors used light reflecting frontal mirrors to look inside the patient's cavities. Yeah. That was a bit unsettling. But back then, it was pretty much always the case with medicine. A chamber pot, 
Fortunately for Carl, inspecting it wouldn't further this particular investigation. A chamber pot. Fortunately for Carl, inspecting it wouldn't further this particular investigation. I guess that's uh, all there is to see in this uh, in this little cabin. The good doctor, flanked by his beautiful spouse. Pure happiness, captured on cardstock. Oh, what does the map say? Okay, so we are at this location. Now we can't go to the left and down there unless we can walk. So I'm gonna go across the bridge again and maybe check out um, cabin A. See where that takes me. Right up here, I think. Oh, what's that? I'll just park it on the side. I guess that's it. Cloutier and Sons was most likely a logging company. Carl had a feeling that this Cloutier must not show his nose up here very often, which suddenly reminded him that he was still looking for the Grand Baron of the area, William Hamilton. It was a typical shack, just like the ones you hear about in Quebecois legends. Local lumberjacks used it to rest and twice a day heat up their pea soup. It's a, uh, infilled? I think. Yeah. It's a game one step away from victory. Is that a potato? Yes, it is. Can 
I guess that's about it. An axe, not too shabby. Carl felt he needed to protect himself. This game is a lot of fun so far. Oh wow, that's cool. Um just in case. Ooh, another cabin. This cabin doesn't look like a bunkhouse, especially with the missing stove and chimney. Carl was intrigued at the secrets possibly hidden here. Gotta figure out a way on how to get in, I guess. Looks like uh, storage or something. Let's just uh, cut through these uh, woods, get to the other cabin. I'm guessing there's another cabin. Carl wondered how long he would have to endure this skin stinging cold. Without a single window to brighten things up, the inside of the cabin was almost pitch black. Beware of close encounters of knee and furniture. That's kind of funny. Solitaire. A card game only hermits can truly enjoy. Carl yeah. felt depressed at the thought of playing this.
Oh, here we go. So someone was just here, I'm guessing. Fully stocked fresh food. Carl looked in amazement at all the food and fresh vegetables. And with these clothes out in the open, one could easily deduce this bunkhouse was used by lumberjacks. They had to be close by. something um, I, I don't think I should do that no mind So we're going to go back to that area, I guess. And get my... And get the rifle back out. Never thought he would be dancing with the wolves. I only did that because it was approaching me, and well, survival. I feel like it's gonna like punish me because I uh, I used a round of, uh, of you know rifle bullets, but oh well. Okay, if I keep on going this way. Maybe I should get back to the truck, actually. Yeah. This game is uh, very interesting. I'm really enjoying it. Um, unless my character pushed this more open. Oh. Maybe I can drive back and get that meat. 
because I, I noticed you can put items in the back of the truck. I might do that. Pause it. Um, I see the point of that. It's at the last cabin that the meat was at, I believe. Oh, maybe I can grab some more uh, of the logs, too. Yeah, I'll try doing that. Oh, I'm going to look at this. Alright, cool. I think there is logs we can grab. I guess not. Oops. Grabbing some logs. Take as many as I can grab, I guess, too. I feel like they'll come in handy for uh, future fires. Oh wow, they actually fill up the back. That's kind of cool. Take two more and then leave.
There we go. Got enough logs for uh, future future little camp fires. straight. See if we can go into town, maybe. Oops. I didn't know that there was a mailbox. Nothing in it. Oops. Um, have I been over there? I don't think I have, but I'll check it out anyways. Maybe I missed something if I have been over there. The atmosphere surrounded the house. The soundlessness of the area suggested it was empty. Of course. When finding a boot, one wonders what became of the foot. I feel creeped out, so I'm keeping the hatched out. The key, which seemed to be meant for a padlock, bore an inscription reading Cloutier and Sons. Hmm, a company name. Better keep an eye open. Businesses weren't exactly numerous around these parts. Uh, some raisins, yep. stub for some undoubtedly harsh lumberjack work. Alexandre Bleu felled trees and chopped woods for Cloutier Fis. Oops, I missed something. There we go. The spirograph amused Carl. It was a nice modern toy. Aside from being repetitive by nature and completely useless, still, it found its way into many Quebecois home. That looks neat. I'll keep that one.
I know I'm dead. If the blankets suggested people woke up precipitously, Carl saw evidence of a disorderly escape. So what was it? I feel scared just being in here, hearing that uh, commotion down, down there in the kitchen. But I feel safe with this, so... Yeah, that's not creepy at all. General untidiness, objects scattered about randomly. Clearly someone had to flee in a hurry. What could have caused such a fright? The snowstorm pummeled everything in its path. Carl was not surprised when he heard no tone. Well, time to get the heck out of here. safe and sound in the truck. It's on the ground. That's one of those uh, push long mowers, I think. Yeah. All right, back in the truck. Okay, let's uh let's see what's on the map. Um You know what? Maybe I might be missing something if if I do drive off. So, I'm going to take out my protection and Walk out in the woods. All because of that child's drawing I found. Of the monster. And these are the only woods behind the house. Maybe I can, maybe I can find an opening somewhere, maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just, uh, I'll just head back to the truck. There's a license. You can kind of see it. And let me try heading straight now and see where that takes me. Driving back up to the house now. Yeah.
this light, okay. Just in case, I'm going to take this out. The track was fresh. That meant the car sunk down just a little while ago. Now where the hell could the passengers possibly have gone? Well, there was a bit. Oh, that was this closing, hopefully. Yeah, okay. The is... road turned into nothingness. Carl hated dead ends. Made him feel trapped. It seemed like the lake managed to completely swallow the road. The other boot was at that house. I'm guessing. Passport. Hmm. Oh, never mind. Someone must have dropped this in a hurry. But whoever did was heading into the woods. Carl's tracking instincts were what? quickly kicking in. Uh, it's one of these things. I know what I'm doing. I'm taking the truck if I can. See if I can just drive in there, then going on foot. I'll end this video here and uh, thank you for watching uh, join just look for uh, part three I guess